You're listening to Crater Community Radio. And now, here is a classic scene from the Goodnight Flagstaff series. Uncle Andrew and his study vanished instantly. Then, for a moment, everything became muddled. The next thing Diggory knew was that there was a soft green light coming down on him from above and darkness below. He didn't seem to be standing on anything or sitting or lying. Nothing appeared to be touching him. I believe I'm in water, said Diggory, or underwater. This frightened him for a second, but almost at once he could feel that he was rushing upwards. Then his head suddenly came out into the air and he found himself scrambling ashore out onto smooth, grassy ground at the edge of a pool. As he rose to his feet, he noticed that he was neither dripping nor panting for breath, as anyone would expect after being underwater. His clothes were perfectly dry. He was standing by the edge of a small pool, not more than ten feet from side to side, in a wood. The trees grew close together and were so leafy that he could get no glimpse of the sky. All the light was green light that came through the leaves, but there were but there must have been a very strong sun overhead, for this green daylight was bright and warm. It was the quietest woods you could possibly imagine. There were no birds, no insects, no animals, and no wind. You could almost feel the trees growing. The pool he had just got out of was not the only pool. There were dozens of others, a pool every few yards as far as his eyes could reach. You could almost feel the trees drinking the water up with their roots. This wood was very much alive. When he tried to describe it afterwards, Diggory always said, It was a rich place, as rich as plum cake. The strangest thing was that, almost before he had looked about him, Diggory had half forgotten how he had come there. At any rate, he was certainly not thinking about Polly, or Uncle Andrew, or even his mother. He was not in the least frightened, or excited, or curious. If anyone had asked him, where did you come from, he would probably have said, I've always been here. That was what it felt like, as if one had always been in that place and never been bored, although nothing had ever happened. As he said long afterwards, it's not the sort of place where things happen. The trees go on growing, that's all. After Diggory had looked at the wood for a long time, he noticed that there was a girl lying on her back at the foot of a tree a few yards away. Her eyes were nearly shut, but not quite, and as if she was just beginning, as if she was just between sleeping and waking. So he looked at her for a long time and said nothing. And at last she opened her eyes and looked at him for a long time, and she also said nothing. Then she spoke in a dreamy, contented sort of voice. I think I've seen you before, she said. I rather think so too, said Diggory. Have you been here long? Oh, always, said the girl. At least, I don't know. A very long time. So have I, said Diggory. No, you haven't, said she. I've just seen you come up out of that pool. Yes, I suppose I did, said Diggory with a puzzled air. I had forgotten. Then for quite a long time, neither said any more. Look here, said the girl presently. I wonder, did we ever really meet before? I had a sort of idea, a sort of picture in my head of a boy and a girl like us, living somewhere quite different and doing all sorts of things. Perhaps it was only a dream. I've had that same dream, I think, said Diggory, about a boy and a girl living next door and something about crawling among the rafters. I remember the girl had a dirty face. Aren't you getting it mixed? In my dream, it was the boy who had the dirty face. I can't remember the boy's face, said Diggory. The girl now sat up, really interested at last. They stared very hard at one another, trying to remember. And then, at exactly the same moment, she shouted out, Mr. Ketterly! And he shouted out, Uncle Andrew! And they knew who they were and began to remember the whole story.